welcome to GLG. Thank you. Great to be here. In terms of your career, what decisions stand out as the moments that you're proudest of? The decisions that I'm most proud of collectively have to do with my being able to create opportunities for other people, particularly people that might have been overlooked. Many, but not all, were women or people of color. And I just feel proud of myself for being able to just say, you know what, I was lucky enough to have someone open a door for me, I'm now gonna open a door for you. And I think that's that's an obligation we all have. And you chose a career at McKinsey, probably the most prestigious management consulting firm, where you then went on to become the first African-American woman to be made partner there. Mm -hmm. Tell me about why you chose McKinsey mm -hmm. and, and what that experience was like for you. Coming up through the ranks at McKinsey, most of the clients were Fortune 500, CEOs and people weren't sure if those people would take advice from a black woman. And I can tell you some of my clients, I was the first black woman that they actually had ever really known. Some of them had a housekeeper who was a black woman, some of them had nobody in their life. So I think that uh, one of the biggest challenges for anybody who comes to the, a corporate or business environment as a little bit different or different in some obvious ways is how to embrace that difference. Is that a conscious thing you did or did it just happen or well, so I guess what I would say is that part of the reason they value you is because you have a different perspective. And everything you do is going to get noticed. So the downside of that is if you make a mistake, everybody's going to say, mm, you see, we told you, you know, that this person was not really up for this. But, but if you do a good job, I guarantee you, if you're different, everybody's also going to be talking about that. And that's you know, a good thing in corporate life. I found that it actually made it easier for me to counsel them because it wasn't an ego thing. I could come in and just say, I'm just trying to help you be successful and here's what I see. And that actually worked, but I, I believe it is harder. I had a client once who used the N-word in a meeting with me and that was a moment. <laughs> just What'd trying. You do? Well, it's interesting. One of the life lessons I learned around that was I didn't call him out on it in real time in the discussion, but after the meeting ended, I kind of pulled him aside. I said, look, you know, here's how I feel when you use a word like that, even as, you know, like slang. And I let him know, like, uh, you're my client, but, but this is more important than any client relationship. This is about being a, a leader and a human being, and you can't, you can't do that. And then he became like one of my best clients. That was a teachable moment for him, though. Yeah, and so the thing is, you know, you can be angry and you can be frustrated, but if you really actually want to change people's behavior, you have to meet them where they are. So you were there 10 years at McKinsey, and then I heard you had to go run something. Is that kind of <laughs> a good summary of what happened? It's funny, again, in terms of how, like, how decisions get made. I went out to lunch with someone who had been at McKinsey, had left after 15 years. And I said, so what's it like on the other side? He said, it's actually, it's completely different. And if you want to run something, he's like, you should leave now. <laughs> so I literally came back from that lunch and I started looking for an operating job. And you ended so, up first at the technology part of a media company mm -hmm. and then running an entire media company, CNBC. Yeah, and I became the CEO of CNBC about six weeks before 9-11. It was definitely a lot of learning. So you've done consulting, mm -hmm. media and technology, and then of course you wake up one morning and you say, I need a career in banking. <laughs> well, I never ever thought I would be a banker. I got a call from a search firm and they said, well, there's this big Swiss bank. You should at least like meet with the CEO, you know, and he has a vision for what he's trying to do with human capital. And you know, if you get a chance to meet with a CEO, you should probably just like take that meeting, right? When you took the role at Credit Suisse though, you also carved out a new markets business. Yes. Which I think spoke to some issues that you care deeply about personally. The new markets business was something that uh, the CEO and I sort of created jointly. And the goal was to say that a big global bank could find real growth opportunities if it became a lot more aware of and focused on the needs of the African-American community, women, and members of the LGBT community, each of which the big banks have traditionally overlooked. I believe in entrepreneurship, and unfortunately, entrepreneurs of color or entrepreneurs are kind of different from the banking officer may not always get the credit that they need to grow their business. Every large company is looking for growth. Why would you walk past a market that's underserved 
when you could just go after it. If you can show them that in fact, hey, there's a big market here, there's a big market with women, there's a big market with the LGBT community, then the next question is gonna be how are you gonna penetrate it? Might be good if you had some members of the community working here. But how have you seen um, the opportunities change for women mm -hmm. and for African Americans in business? I would have predicted that things would be so much better, and in fact, we seem to have plateaued. So if you look at the number of female CEOs of you know, big companies, it's, it's kind of static. Same with people of color. For every black CEO or even our black president, right, there are legions of people that are not living their dreams because they just can't get above a certain level in the management hierarchy. And you, know, you could say the same with board of directors, right? It's better, but they're still major companies that don't have any people of color on their board. They have one woman on their board, and they think that's like a big achievement. I and think, and those know, are important. Boards are important. Well, the board hires the CEO. Mm -hmm. The board pays the CEO. The board decides what management is, you know, going to look like at, you know, at some literal level, and that's important. Credit Suisse did a report on women board members, and it was proven that shareholder value is highest when you have more diversity on the board, and the best performing companies have half of their board membership as female. Diverse groups, they just make better decisions. Why don't people do it then, right? If it's so easy and if it's so clear, why don't they do it? Um, humans are pesky that way. You can give them facts and they don't always act on them. I think it's because it's very hard for people to get out of their comfort zone. There is a risk when you bring in somebody who's different. So the benefit is maybe we'll make some better decisions in the long run. That'd be good because then the stock price would go up. But the cost is I have to make myself uncomfortable. Maybe it won't work. And then that's going to be a bloody mess because who's going to ask the person to leave the board if it's not working? And then, you know, by the way, next time we're just not doing that anymore. But, so, you, would, but you would say it's, it's smarter to take the risk. I understand that for other people the cost is higher, but I passionately believe the benefit is more.